the disappearance of Kaylee Anthony and what the jury didn't hear. There's a new documentary about Casey Anthony. Before you watch that documentary, keep this in mind. June 16, 2008, the last day Kaylee Anthony was seen alive. Kaylee's grandmother, Cindy Anthony, leaves for work at 6.57 a.m., leaving Kaylee, Casey, and George in the home alone. About an hour later at 7.52 a.m., the family computer registered a login. Almost an hour later at 7.52 a.m., the Anthony's family computer registered a login to Casey Anthony's password-protected MySpace account, where searches for shop girl costumes were made. Clearly, that wasn't George. We believe those searches were made in connection to Casey Anthony's boyfriend's nightclub events. At 1.39 p.m., the computer again logs in Casey Anthony's MySpace account, while also logging into her AOL and Facebook account. They all required a password login. Minutes later, at 1.44 p.m., Casey calls her roommate, Amy, and they talk for 37 minutes on the phone. 2.30 p.m., George Anthony leaves for work. His cell phone records would confirm his movements and verify that he was no longer in the home or the area. So now, Casey and Kaylee are home alone together. What happened next would never be heard by the jury. At 2.49 p.m., Casey's cell phone records confirm she is in the area of the home. Shortly after, the family's computer again registers another password-protected login made by Casey on her AOL Instant Messenger. Two minutes later, at 2.51 p.m., a Google search is made on how to foolproof blank someone. Within five seconds of Googling this, an article is clicked. And this article tells you different ways to blank someone. Plastic bag, poison, and the article that was clicked was called Foolproof Ways to D.I.E. Why did the jury never hear about this? This is the prosecution's fault. 252, Casey's MySpace is logged into again with another protected password login. Clearly, she's accessing her MySpace account. The prosecution literally had forensic data that linked Casey Anthony to these searches. These internet searches would be deleted on July 16, 2008, hours before Casey was arrested. In the days and weeks following, June 16, Casey would be seen on surveillance footage in many different places like Target, JCPenney, but not once did she have Kaylee with her. Four days after her daughter's disappearance, she was in a hot body contest at Ultra Fusion Lounge, being seen in photos like this during the investigation of her daughter's disappearance, literally days after her daughter disappeared. I will never understand how prosecutors dropped the ball on this case. She basically handed them the case. Remember the 911 call made by her mother, Cindy, where she says Casey's car smells like a dead body? Then the jailhouse call, where all Casey's worried about is getting out? She never asked about Kaylee or even seems concerned about her daughter at all. Then the case really takes a turn, and Casey pins everything on her parents, people who were not even there. But see, the jury didn't know that because the prosecution dropped the ball when they had forensic data linking her to these internet searches and cell phone records that proved everyone's whereabouts.